so guys welcome back to another video and in uh, today's video we are going to be talking about the model view view model architecture or rather mvvm as it's called now as you know we could code whatever we want however we want in an app but it's general practice to you know like follow a programming uh, predefined programming style and organization which is generally set by the team leader for the team mvvm is a famous architecture followed while writing swift ui apps and this video is just like a basic introduction to that guys so anyway yeah let's get started uh, first of all this is just a blank i mean this is just the basic boilerplate code that i have just scaffolded up now uh, let's just create a new file we'll call this the model file uh, let's create a car car a model file called car okay this is going to be our model file so we'll just create a model stuff car identifiable Mar ID equals UID. All right, I have a simple model file, and uh, this is this it is nothing but it just says what data is going to be there, what data is are we going to handle inside a view. That's it. Now let's go ahead and create a view model file. The view model file is the one that holds all the business logic to interface with the model as well as with the data that's coming in from an external API call. And whatever data we get, it'll just map it to this particular model file and then provide the data to the view file. Oh, like I said, this is going to be our uh, view model file. So let me just create a class, class car view model, model uh, observe, observable object. Let me use a published variable here since this is the value is going to be okay. Let, let me just use a published variable here. Cars, car, right? Car, this is the model car this is going to be a list uh, for now this will be empty and uh, let's just write a function get cars now normally this would be the function where you would get data from an external endpoint and then map that data into this particular model which could then be accessed uh, in the view file since this is just going to be a basic beginner video we'll just have like a set of hard-coded data that we'll use so let me just use car dummy data. Fine, now I'll just uh, fetch this car sequence, car dummy data, that's it. Now, as soon as the app loads, let me just write an initializer that will ensure that we fetch the data. All right, now we can make use of this cars in the content view. To do that, what you need to do is inject this view model into this view. How to do that? To do that, you need to this is an observable object, right? We need to create an object that is an observed object. Observed object is the one that's going to be watching the observable object. So what we can do is uh, create an observed object. Uh, car view model. And here you can also use a state object, guys. A state object can be used if you want to preserve the state in the same view for different components in case you're updating the value in any of the uh, places. If you want to use this throughout the app, you could use an environment. Anyway, that's beyond the scope of the video. Similarly, similar to an observed object, you could use a state object here as well. That's my point. And uh, inside this, what we can do is we'll just remove all this hard-coded thing. Yeah, okay. And uh, we'll create a form, form uh, for each 
view model dot cars car in and create a disclosure group disclosure group car dot name and uh, text color car dot color condition car dot condition cool right as you can see here this actually has loaded from here and then once the get cars is called this is then pushed to this published object since we are observing this object from here uh, it simply picks it up and then displays it now if i click on this you can see that the color is black and new and this is uh, something is burgundy right yeah burgundy and new this is green and new and this is all from the data that we have provided so similarly you could fetch data from an external api endpoint map it to this model file and then uh, do whatever you can do whatever you want with this particular data guys for uh, let me show you something let me for instance uh, if i say func add car uh, this is a function that you can use to add a car so car start insert mm, car name toyota condition Hold color. Sorry, what's my auto uh, color? Brown. Okay. And then I can specify an index at zero. Okay, so that the car new car is always pu always pushed to the top. And I can also do a remove car function. Remove car. Uh, car start remove first. Now, I'll call these two functions from my uh, content view using a couple of buttons maybe. So in order to do that, what I'll do is, hmm, this is the form, right? H stack button add car action uh, view model dot add car and one more button okay this button looks like it doesn't look like anything at all let me just add a bit of styling ah button style doesn't look that good right let's move the center the inside the form yeah uh, okay now we have a couple of buttons add car and remove car the add car should automatically call this and then add like a new car let's see what happens as you can see here as soon as i click add car it's just adding a new car right if i wanted to remove yeah that's happening as well the first car is being removed now if i add a add like a animation that would be really cool it's really cool right it's kind of a bit uh, draggy as you can see if i if I if I add here, watch this, watch the last one. It kind of so it's like something is pulling it down and then adding the top. So what I'll do is instead of zero 
simply do cars.com so this will add it at the last and here i'll just do remove last now if i go there and add car it's cool right so yeah similarly you can have any number of functions that you can use here you can write here to uh, manipulate the data and then those functions could be called here uh, based on the uh, user's activity inside the view so yeah guys this is exactly what mvvm is this is kind of like a very basic example but you get the general idea right we separate all our data uh, models in separate files and then what we do is we write like sort of a view model that acts as a bridge between the uh, data and the view so whatever the user activity happens in the view or whatever the data is being displayed on the view is handled from the view model uh, instance of the view model is created and then injected this is what is happening sorry what was it this is what's being done to inject the view model into the view and uh, uh, inside the view model what you do is you automatically handle all the data operations that is you fetch data you manipulate data you push data and all that stuff and that could be then accessed inside the view this is exactly what mvvm is generally what people do is or generally what i do is i uh, generally normally people write this as an extension and uh, like i said you could also use like a uh, let me show you how to write it as an extension so that you can this would be written as an extension on this particular on any particular view whichever view you want to inject that mod view model you would write it as an extension to that view so here in this case it would be content view right and this would be the main actor since you want it to be on the main thread this would be the main actor and uh, here inside the content view you could simply i think it will throw up an error yeah you can't call it like this since uh, that's an extension so what you need to do is instead of calling it like this add it in a closure that's it so i'll remove this Yeah, the errors are now gone, right? Now, yeah. Uh, similarly, this will work. Yeah. And here, like I said, you can like use a state object as well. And once again, this will work just fine. Cool. So yeah, this is just. A, let me just stop here. This is a basic video uh, on MVVM, but you got, just to give you the general picture. And uh, this doesn't end here, guys. Uh, I mean, the video, the, this video kind of ends here. I know this example looks way too simple, but I'll make a couple more videos, one on async and uh, await, and uh, one more on fetching data from an API endpoint and using it in an app, which is model, which is organized in this MVVM architecture for you guys. And as we go deeper and deeper, we'll start looking into how to build large scale applications using different architectures now there are obviously other architectures other patterns as well there is a pattern called viper anyway I i'll make another couple of videos showcasing other architectural patterns in swift ui as well uh yeah if you want to see all these videos kindly subscribe to my channel guys if you like this video kindly hit the like button and uh, if you want my help or you need something you have any doubts kindly drop a comment below uh if you really found this helpful kindly share it with someone and help them too and yeah subscribe guys i'll talk to you guys in my next video bye